need data for your next data science project? Well, in this video, we're gonna be taking a look at five easy to access data sources that you can use for your next data science experiment. Let's kick things off. Data source number one, university data sets. Universities tend to have amazing data sets, principally because they have great research bodies. Some of the greatest data sets include the UCI Berkeley data set, MIT AI Labs data set, as well as the Stanford Large Network data set. If you actually go visit a lot of their sites, you're able to download these data sets and start to begin using them for non-commercial use. This is great, particularly if you have computer vision tasks or if you have tabular data set tasks. Another great data set as well is the Stanford Medical Imaging data set. Now again, all of these links are gonna be available in the description below, so you can pick them up and start running with it. Data source number two. Data source number two is Kaggle. So Kaggle is renowned for having great data sets. They have data sets on a whole range of sources as well as often having accompanying notebooks to start beginning working with those data sets. Some of the really interesting data sets that I've found on there include interesting tweet data sets from certain presidential candidates, data sets on credit card usage, data sets on image based models. The nice thing about Kaggle is there is a whole wide range of diversity. Data source number three. Now this one may be a little bit controversial because I believe one of the greatest data sets that you can actually access is the natural world around you. This is particularly so if you're working on perception tasks like sound classification, computer vision and object detection. You can actually just take your iPhone or take your webcam and actually start scanning the world around you and collecting images. Obviously, this takes a little bit more effort because it does mean that you're going to have to do additional labeling or additional pre-processing, but that doesn't mean it's not a great source of data. With just a couple of lines of code, you can actually activate your webcam to start capturing frames from an image, and I'll include a link in the description below for my image collection code that you're actually able to use to snap out frames from a webcam. So you could also use this to pre-process video from your iPhone or even images from your iPhone to be able to use those for your data science projects. Data source number four, scraping the World Wide Web. One of the most amazing packages out there in the Python universe is Beautiful Soup. In just three lines of code, again, which I'll link below, you're able to write your very own web scraper to be able to get data from any website. Now, one of the most amazing things about this, particularly if you're working in natural language tasks, is that you can grab massive amounts of data. So say, for example, you wanted to get a whole list of blog posts to fine tune a GP22 model, you could do that. Say, for example, you wanted to get a whole bunch of YouTube titles, you could scrape YouTube to be able to go and generate new YouTube titles. There's a whole heap of data that's accessible to you simply by building your own web scraper, and it only takes three lines of code. Data source number five, open source and company data sets. A lot of open source packages tend to have great data sets to demonstrate how to actually use their libraries. Now that's not to say that you can't actually still use these for your projects as well. TensorFlow has a whole heap of data sets that you can use as well as PyTorch and Keras. Pick these up, start playing around and start experimenting with your data science projects. Now another great source is actually using open company data sets. Companies like Google have open sourced a whole bunch of different data sets via their data search capability IBM Asset Exchange has also released a ton that you're able to pick up and use for your own data experimentation. And that about wraps up the five simple data sources that you can begin to use for your data science experiments. Hope you found these useful. If there are any more that you think that I left off the list that should definitely be on there, please leave a comment in the comments below and I'll take a look and add them to the list. Thanks so much for tuning in guys. Hopefully you found this video useful. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe and tick that bell so you get notified of when I release future videos. And let me know which of these data sources you found most useful. Thanks again for tuning in, peace.